the Frugal Crafter with a really cute project today. At least I think it is. We're going to do some faux cloisonne jewelry boxes. So what we start off with is, uh, that was a little wet. <laughs> what we start off with is some craft jewelry boxes. And these are adorable. They're one and one eighth by one and three quarter inches big. And they are from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. And you get a box of a hundred of these cuties for about $23. So not bad. There's a little cotton inside there. So you could package up your homemade earrings or other little goodies in there. Um, but I'm going to show you how with a little bit of sparkly paint and acrylic paint and a stamp and some ink, we're going to make magic happen. Magic, I tell you. Let's go to the table and I'll show you how it's done. Here are my little examples, my little uh, practices of the faux cloisonne technique. So basically what we have, um, I did do some boxes with the top and bottom both black, but I like the contrast. So there's your little box and you put your little cotton that comes with it back in there. Um, but you've got a metallic stamped image with, that's raised. And then I filled it in with liquid watercolor, um, with this uh, metallic watercolor rather. And it just gives it a really nice, pretty special look. And you've got all the shimmers and the sheens. And regular cloisonne would be made by um, thin... Um, strips of metal and then it would be filled in with enamel and then kiln fired so this gives you a very similar look but with you know easily accessible materials so the first thing we're going to do is take one of our craft boxes and um, paint the cover with black acrylic paint you can use uh, craft paint or um, artist quality paint it really doesn't matter with artist quality paint one coat will suffice if you're using the craft quality paint you may need two coats but this is not a big deal and I'm just using a little foam brush for this and um, I'm just going to try to um, not get too many brush strokes. So just give it a good coating of paint. Now, I the first one I did, I did the top black and the bottom black. And I thought that was neat. But then I thought, gee, what if I do like a metallic color? I wonder how that would work on this, uh, this craft material. Well, it turns out it works really, really well. Let's get my fingers. If you put your fingers on the inside and kind of stretch them apart, you can hold it and not get... Um, not get paint on the inside of your box. You'll be able to cover everything. And then I just kind of flick lightly over there just to kind of get rid of my brush strokes. Now I'm going to set that aside to dry. Now let me grab a rag and wipe my hands off. Now on the bottom, I'll take the little piece of cotton out. Uh, we'll use some watercolors for that. And I find that the lighter the color of your metallic watercolors, the uh, more opaque they are. So if I go with this light green, it's really going to cover well. And I found also if I spray my palette with water, it works really well. Now this is um, Yatsumoto's palette of, oh, I don't know how many colors are there. I should have counted that before I started. <laughs> of many colors. They're very pretty. Um, and you can get those at um, Hobby Lobby or online or at a stamp show. Um, I think I grabbed this at the Judy Kins booth at one of the stamp shows for, I don't know, six bucks. It was crazy cheap. I've seen it as much as ten, but, you know, not a lot. And um, just give it a thin coat of the watercolor. And you will notice that it will have a beautiful shimmer to it. See that? Just got a really, really reflective sheen and uh, really, really inexpensive paints there. Or you can make your own. I have a video on making your own watercolor, metallic watercolors. You can do that as well, absolutely. All right, so now what I'm going to do is grab a lid that I've already done. It's already painted with the black. And um, we're going to stamp. So what I have here is just a big background stamp. Um, I'm using a floral design. You want to have something that's really um, has a lot of line work, like a line pattern or line drawing. You don't want anything with a lot of shading or detail because you need to be able to get in there and paint in all the little sections. So this floral stamp is from um, the uh, card making and paper craft magazine, the UK magazine. It came as my freebie last month. They usually send a stamp or something. Um, each month with their magazine. And then I'm going to look at this and try to find an area where it has an interesting design that I'd want to color in. And I think I'm going to choose right here. So I'm just going to press it down and then put my fingers on the inside of my lid. See like that? And just kind of make sure that it's really pressing into the stamp. Uh, that's where the clear stamps have an advantage. Um, they're really kind of squishy so they will really uh, meet up to your box and give you a good impression. So see I've got a really nice impression and that's really pretty as it is but to get the cloisonne effect we want to put some embossing powder on there so what I have here is just a scrap of paper and some um, cool gold embossing powder I don't know the brand I think it might be stampendous but any brand is fine and I'm just gonna dump some 
powder on top of there just like so and then I'm going to heat it up with my heat tool you can see that we've got a really nice uh nice coverage there so I'm just going to heat it up with my heat tool and we'll be back in just a second there we go look how pretty and shiny that is now if you want to add a border around it which I think looks really nice and realistic just take your ink pad and just gently kind of rub along the edge you just want to get that corner and it's not hard I thought kind of thought when I first tried it that it would be messy and I would get a get ink everywhere I didn't want it but just gently tap or rub the ink right along the corner this will almost give it like a kind of a soldered look too you can always do that on like panels you want to have like a faux solder to and then just put a little bit more powder on there just so it gets on the sides you could actually probably even just dip it in the pile of powder that's left yep that's working pretty well if you have any any powder there you don't want that doesn't that doesn't come off when you blow on it you can just brush it off with a little soft brush now I'm going to heat this one more time and then it'll have a nice pretty frame all the way around it now look at that we've that beautiful frame everything is nice and shiny and also we have a raised design on there so it's going to be really easy to paint I have my paints here so I'm going to use some shades of green I'm going to use some pink and I'm going to use some blue in the background but I really want to zoom in close so you can see the uh, painting on the box all right I'm going to start by mixing some light pink with some of my darker pink and that's going to give me a nice opaque coverage uh, you can use twinkling H2O's for this as well and in fact if you didn't have any of this you could um, paint the top of the box with like a silver or a pearl acrylic paint or just fill it in with metallic acrylic paints you could even use um, like metallic colored pencils you know really use what you have the thing that really makes it have that close on a look is the um, is that raised gold and also the other nice thing about that is even if you're painting this quickly like maybe you want to make I don't know 20 of these for wedding favors or you know you want to do a bunch for a craft fair or something that's great because the um, the gold will kind of resist the paint I'm not being very careful here I'm just slapping it on there and since this is a watercolor it resists it wouldn't resist so well with acrylics but with a watercolor it's just fantastic for a resist and you can kind of see if I tip that how nice and shimmery that is and um, talk about cheap thrills I mean this was such an inexpensive little set of metallic watercolors go in there in my leaves see you can really see how it's resisting there because I have my green is a little more watery the green is very opaque and it keeps the colors from running into each other which is nice too so I don't have to like do all the pinks and come back and do all the greens and come back I can do it all at once a little bit of um, my blue here oops I got a little too much on there I'm gonna blot my brush off on a cloth um, and the thing with it, it seems like almost every brand of water, metallic watercolor that's like in pans like that I've come across you really want to make sure that you um, leave the cover open and let it dry fully before you clamp it down um, I don't know if it I think it might have something to do because I was trying to figure out why you know if it's all mica why does it do that and I'm wondering if maybe some of the colors might have fish scales in it as in for the um, for the shimmer instead of mica or something else that might be moldable I don't or might tend to mold I'm not sure I'm gonna do a little yellow in the centers I just think this is so elegant looking and what an easy way to make a cute little favor box or jewelry box I mean you know whatever's in here whatever jewelry that you put in here it's gonna be real special when you've taken the time to decorate a box like that and then um, it fits right on the bottom like that now that's not a contrasting one because that's the one that I had uh, before I realized I wanted the contrasting one but I can take this one off and show you contrasting one how pretty that is but see it's so pretty and you can you know you could even use this as a jewelry piece if you wanted to put like a little you know a couple holes in the side and put ribbon through it I think that would be really cute as well I hope you enjoyed today's project. Here's a closer look at all three of them together. Uh, if you like this, check out our sponsor, Paper Mart, where you will find all these craft jewelry boxes in a variety of sizes, all for the best price on the internet. You can find them at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.